Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today I'm going to be doing an unusual toy, a London Toy 15 beverage truck. This is the toy I picked up in the last spring and it became the bane of my existence to the point where I don't even have a proper shot of it turning on the turntable. Here's a shot of me setting up the turntable and I think uh, I had the thing recording when I thought it was on pause and I got it in reverse. So as soon as I got the thing set up, I stopped it from recording. So anyway, you get a very interesting turntable shot. You can see this toy is uh, it's in rough shape. Uh, this paint is chipped off. It's kind of a boring toy. In fact, I look at this and I go, it's kind of an ugly duckling and it's pretty hopeless. And I can honestly say in the end, you'll see, I was very, very wrong. Here you can see London toy beverage truck made in Canada and it's a number 15. Uh, they made a series of toys. Um, they were obviously hollow. They didn't have a, a base attached to them. This is only seven parts, two axles, four wheels and a, and a casting for the body. And those wheels are made from fiber. So kind of a pressed paper. And here I'm trying to take the axles off. Those uh, axles are crimped in there and it's a lot of trouble. And in the end, I wound up damaging a couple of these uh, as I'm trying to pry out the, the axles. So it's, it should be a simple model, but it's not. Now you might be wondering, it's a London toy, you've never heard of it. And if you're living in the kingdom of Uck, you might never have seen one of these. That's because it's not made in London, England. There's no reference to London, England. It's London, Ontario. The company was formed in 1930, and it's not certain when they started making these uh, toys. They also made compressors and other industrial equipment because London uh, was a was a, a uh, industrial sort of town. And they made industrial things, and apparently they used the casting material also to make toys when they had extra casting material or substandard ones. They made toys out of them. These very, very simplistic toys. There you can see the fiber wheels and you, th you would think they wouldn't stand up very long but I've seen quite a few of these in antique stores and they all seem to have the, the paper wheels which is pretty cool but they're not very attractive. Uh, so these toys um, certainly they were made after the war, but they may also have been made before the war. It seems like nobody really knows. So I started at the paint with the uh, liquid paint stripper. There you can see it uh, bubbling up. And once I got the paint off, uh, I went and I buffed it up and start getting it ready for painting. Initially, my plan was to just restore this to what it would have looked like when it was first sold in the store. And that's why I was thinking, well, it's a pretty boring model with a very boring paint job. They didn't even paint silver on the grill or the bumper. The castings are very rough, so I'm cleaning those up. And you can see on the roof, uh, it didn't go into the, into the dye very well and has left some cavity there and a little bit in other places. So I filled those up and sanded them off and now this toy was kind of a, a nemesis for me after the uh, the super test uh, tow truck that I built uh, summer started and I thought I would work on this one because it's a very simple model I thought okay this should be pretty easy to get it uh, ready this is a later uh, paint job I think this is like the fourth paint job that I put on this and this is uh, Vallejo primer for uh, for painting models but I don't think it was designed for going over metal and uh, it's kind of thin and I had to put a lot of coats on to get some kind of cover um, so at this point I was starting to think maybe I should strip this off and go instead with the Tamiya pink uh, primer but then I said you know what I've stripped this thing already three times and I don't want to I don't want to start that all over again and spoil the winter just like I spoiled last summer. So instead I decided to go, I had an idea for a metallic paint color. 
and I want it to be kind of um, reddish purplish uh, metallic and it, it came out like that kind of more like a weird purplish uh, bronze type of look and just as I was spraying it I said I really hate this and it's again instead of stripping it the paint was smooth and clear so I thought let's go with a new color and I wanted to get a very very dark red so I took red and I started adding black to it and it's hard to see when you when I'm doing it and I'm thinking okay this, this doesn't it looks too light it looks the same as the as what it is now except it won't be metallic so I added more black and kept going uh, so I would get like a close to a black and what I wound up with instead of a really really dark red I wound up with what turns out to be a chocolate brown I think if I want to have a really dark red I have to find uh, one that was commercially mixed as a very dark red so back into the spray booth and give it its fifth or sixth I don't I lost count how many times I painted this thing and this time it's going to be a chocolate brown now there's a reason why I wanted a dark color um, and that's because um, you'll, you'll see in a minute now I'm showing you a little bit more this is a uh, Tinkercad it's a very basic sort of uh, CAD program for making 3d printed parts so I took old hubs that I designed for actually for the uh, super test van and I modified it with a hole through the middle and now here it goes into Chichu boxes where it's a slicer so it creates slices for the 3d printer so each of the slices uh, is printed one slice at a time so here I've put it up on little stilts uh, on an angle because it prints better on an angle and here I'm copying the one that I did and here I'll put it on to center and now I go in and I say slice and here it's been sliced and you can see I can slide up and down and it shows each slice at a time and that's how it winds up printing one layer at a time so it goes on to a thumb drive and I plug the thumb drive into my Elegoo Mars 2 printer a used printer it's already old news this one and I go in and I look for the one that I want to do which is the London hubs and I print I didn't get it on film but anyway here's the resulting parts I mean primarily this is a dinky thing so I'm not really showing all the detail of 3d printing it just wanted to give you an idea there so I'm painting these just with the spray paint silver that I have which is actually a really awesome silver color and now you got to take these rims off of the little base with all those little supports and so I could do that with these little clippers that actually come with the printer when you buy it they're electrical clippers but uh, they're good for this purpose too and eventually you get tired of clipping all these little things off oh, there it flies off and one left and there it is now the tires I'm going to use and I'm replacing the fiber tires so anything will work and so I'm using my o-rings that I usually use on the dinky toys now so I don't mess up the paint I just press it in with a pencil so there you go and the through hole is where the axle goes through so this is a beverage truck so obviously it's for carrying beer I found an old picture of a Canadian uh, beer truck for O'Keeffe's and look at the logo on the side I've uh, reproduced that logo by sketching it out on top in Photoshop and then coming up with this and I was able to make uh, decals from that. Uh, O'Keefe actually is not a London company it's from Toronto but uh, Carling is and the two companies later merged. Carling was uh, started in 1840 in London and they merged with O'Keefe uh, later on and they had Carling O'Keefe which they still had when I was a youth uh, but now it's been sp split off into different companies uh, later on it was bought by Australians and they took it to Australia and they made Canadian beer in Australia called Foster's and the UK you can get uh, Carling O'Keefe uh, beer uh, it was a very popular beer 
it's called Black Label in the in the UK, and also they made breweries in the United States. So it's uh, it's spread around the world, and they're still making co uh, beers under various different names. So I've chose the O'Keeffe's portion because I had that graphic, and of course it was on a dark truck. So this is a dark truck. That's why I chose this uh, very dark brown color. So it would kind of work with that. Now since O'Keeffe and London Toy had existed in the 30s, I decided I would uh, choose the date for this uh, truck to be from somewhere in the mid 30s. It's kind of a modernistic design that could have existed before the war because uh, they started to make some streamlined cars and streamlined trucks like that one, the image that this uh, logo is from. I think it works well and I'm actually kind of pleased with the way it's turning out. It's still a uh, it's still a bit of a tough casting to work with. The problem I had was you can see there's a little bit of the paint is chipped off the corner already. Actually I don't think it even stuck to it properly. Uh, at those corners it would get very thin as the paint dried and so I never got a perfect coat of paint but this is, a, this is the best coat I got and looks pretty good. So I decided I'm just going to keep going with this until it's done. And sometimes you got to do that. You got to ignore some minor problems and just go on and finish the darn thing. Now here's one of the things. If you're going to put color decals on to a dark surface, you need to put a background uh, that's white. Uh, and it's hard to paint a background that has this kind of sharp edge detail. So this is for taillights and... Uh, license plate on the back. So I get that on there, I let it dry, so that was a passage of time going on there. And now on a single piece, the same size, I'm putting on the color detail, which is the taillights and the, I believe it's a 1932 license plate. And it's hard to see, but those uh, those cool little lights uh, I found on the internet, they have the red, but they also have a little word saying stop in the upper portion. So I, I, I saw that and I said, okay, I, that's what I have to put on this truck. It just looks cool. The, the image of the old truck had just a number on the door. So I gave it the number 316. I don't know why. It just came to my head. Maybe somebody can figure out what it means and why it subconsciously came into my head. But that's the number I put on it. So I presume there's another at least 315 other trucks in this fleet. And O'Keefe was actually the first company in North America to deliver beer with trucks. So after it all dries up it gets another coat of lacquer over top to protect the, the decals and, uh, and the paint job gets a little bit deeper and shinier. Now for the front detail I didn't want to just brush it on. I like the look of this uh, sprayed uh, silver so I taped it up uh, very basically taped it up and put a very uh, judicious coat of paint so it wouldn't bleed under the, the tape because it's impossible to get that tape to be just perfect. So if you just put on a few blasts of the paint so that it's, uh, it's very dry as it hits it, it doesn't bleed underneath. There's a lot of nice London toys out there. In particular, there's a model that's a, uh, a pickup truck, which looks fantastic. And now I've got my eyes open for it because I want to get one. I have that, these cool uh, fenders that cover the wheels. Uh, you wouldn't be able to steer this thing, but they look cool. 
and the uh, pickup truck has them on the front and the back so I'm looking for one of those now so there's not much to detail on this some headlights And that's about it. Took a few coats to get the uh, lights to be covered over that dark brown paint. So now I decided I've gone this far. So I'm making a windshield. First I make a paper pattern and I fit it in there and trim it until I get it right. And I get it pretty good and then I cut it out of plastic. These, this plastic comes in all sorts of packing material. This, this particular piece is from, uh, from a box of Christmas cards and it was separating the different versions of the card inside the box. And it's nice and clean, not scratched or anything because it was inside the package. So I'll get that in there and that seems to fit just right. I think I still trimmed it after this a little bit, but there it looks pretty good. Very simple. Now if I'm going to have a windscreen and windows, I'm going to need an interior. So I took a, an interior from the uh, Super Test pickup truck and put the seats and the stick shift and everything into it. But I made a different shape so that it would fit into the body of the London toy. I only took two versions, so I'm getting pretty good at uh, making these things, and it fits just perfect. There, you now you can see that there's seats for a driver to sit in, and he's got a gear shift knob to change gears. Now I decided I wanted to have a very contrasty look uh, by having absolute bright yellow interior, so that it's easier to see on this model that has very, very tiny windows. So that goes into the spray booth and I give it a coat of paint and on the bottom I spray black so that uh, when you look at the bottom of the toy you won't see the kind of raw plastic from the 3D printer. And here I've got my very fine steering wheel and of course the black contrasts really really well with the yellow interior. And I think it looks fantastic. And actually you can see that through the window, so it's it was worth the extra effort. It's tricky working with these fine parts because you can't handle it with your fingers. You're going to break the steering wheel right off of it. So now we start the assembly. So first goes in the windshield. I actually started to assemble it and realized I hadn't put the windshield in, so I had to start all over again. So now, what turns out to be very difficult is getting these wheels in. Now you think I could just drop them in, but I didn't take, I didn't open the one side. I broke the two. That's easy. I could have just dropped them in and then glue them in. Maybe I should have done that to the other two on the other side. I didn't so I wanted to get these axles through there and so you can see I'm fighting a whole battle to get this thing in. Meanwhile the seats are popping back out and eventually I get it in place and then I can move on to the to the rear wheels. Now this is my usual five minute epoxy. This is how I'm going to hold these and I'm not going to try and recrimp those because they're just going to, well the back one is already broken off and the front one's just going to break off if I move it at all. So I'm just going to put a little touch of, of the epoxy on there and you can see the, the rear one goes on a little bit easier. And again a little bit of epoxy to hold it in place and once that dries in five minutes it's not going to come off very easily and I do the same so that the so that the uh, seats don't pop out either now it needed to carry some beer so I went on to Thingiverse and I found 
this batch of barrels and I thought okay well that's a way I can print out a lot of barrels very quickly without having to build a whole bunch and then try and stack them onto the onto the back of the truck so here I've, I've downloaded it in the computer as an STL file whatever that means and it went into the uh, 3d printer and I printed out eight of them and now I've that, that used pink primer and this is the brown I'm going to paint the barrels with I don't use the uh, the shiny thinner just the ordinary thinner so I could thin it for the airbrush and I'll get a coat of paint on it so back into the uh, spray booth Spent a little time getting all the little details of these things covered in paint. And they're just stuck there with a piece of tape onto a little piece of cardboard. Now this is a, a wash with a darker brown. And I'm putting that so it highlights the, uh, the grain in the barrels. I'm, I'm new to this kind of stuff. Uh, it comes out a little bit better looking, but I wish I'd used a little bit darker color. Here's another trick. Uh, I discovered this one by accident. I was painting the uh, the bumper and the front grill of the of the truck with the silver, and it was a bit was on my finger when I rubbed it onto the barrel. It just went onto the hoops. So I thought, well, that's what I want. So I've sprayed a little bit onto this uh, stirring stick and, and it takes a while for the, for the silver to dry, even though, even though it's there for, for minutes while I'm doing this, it's still, it's still wet enough that it goes. And, it, and of course it's a flat surface. So it just goes to the high points, which is the hoops. So that gave it a little bit uh, of a better look. And then these go onto the back of the truck using uh, the five minute epoxy. So it's not intended to be a toy. If you just put those on the back, they're gonna fall off right away. So they're gonna be glued in there permanently. And with all of this stuff, a toy that I first thought, look at this thing. It's a very boring toy. It's cheaply made, it's hollow body. How could I possibly make it look any good? Turns out I was so wrong about this model. Let's see how it turned out. This actually looks like a very nice toy. If you saw this in the store, you'd say, whoa, that's really nice. The tires look really cool because they're covered with, uh, with these skirts and or what do they call them spats and covered with spats so it's just the bottom of the tires and a bit of the rim is showing and then it's got all these barrels in the back and it's got the logos painted on it if they sold these like this they gotta sold them for double the price or almost as much as you would buy a dinky toy for if you had something that looked this pretty so now i'm thinking if i see any london toy uh, other vehicles maybe i'll buy them and i'll and I'll customize them like this and make them look stunningly beautiful. This became one of my favorite toys just because of all the work I put into it. If I'd just done it as an ordinary restoration, I would have been disappointed. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Detailing. Remember to like, share, and subscribe because you don't want to miss the ones that are coming up. Until next time, be seeing you.